Back to the scriptures. Brothers and sisters, in this message today, we want to urge you to seek the pursuit of joy rather than the pursuit of happiness. You got to go for joy, Christian brothers and sisters, because joy is going to last you forever. Why? Because joy is of the Lord. And uh, I'm learning, and I want all of you to learn, let's go for some, something that's going to be with us forever. Praise God. No matter what we face. Amen. Pastor, we must seek joy because joy is eternal. It is eternal. The Holy Scriptures, Amen. as they are in the Bible, is the most powerful gift given to mankind. Why? Because the Scriptures, when we properly interpret the, the Scriptures and take it in and Amen. eternalize it and get it in our soul, it changes us and transforms us. And there's no other earthly power that can do that. Praise God. This is in the Bible, Pastor. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, from the contemporary English, Version the Bible says everything in the scriptures is God's word, all of it is useful for teaching and helping people and for correcting them and showing them how to live. Well, I tell you, doctor, the scriptures is really our moral guide, uh, uh, it is the thing that helps us to navigate through this life and to develop the best kind of character that one could ever think of. Amen. It is the kind of character that pleases God and is useful to the world. So we have to go for it. Thank you, Pastor. Welcome to the Universal Christian Church of Christ. I'm Dr. Tron LaFavor. I'm here with Pastor James LaFavor, the senior pastor of the Universal Christian Church of Christ. For over 40 years, he's been changing lives with the teaching and preaching of God's Word. It's my pleasure because, you know, the Word of God is the best thing that we have. It, it, is, it is beneficial for life. Without the Word of God, we have nothing Amen. that we can count on, nothing that we can build on, nothing that we can depend on, nothing that is lasting. So the Word of God is essential. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, today we come to you in a time of great need. We desperately need the joy of the Lord because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Today, as we expound on the Word of God, we ask that our pastor, as he speaks these words into our heart and into our lives, it will give us lasting and eternal joy. Thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The topic of our message today is, what is the difference between joy and happiness? This is an interesting uh, message, so I'm looking forward to sharing this uh, with the people because there is a difference between joy and happiness. Every human being longs for joy and happiness. Dr. LaFever, joy is a longing of the soul. And we can tell because no matter what we acquire in this world, um, without the joy of the Lord, we will still find ourselves empty and we'll keep looking for something else to satisfy that longing of the heart. No soul is satisfied until we find God. Amen. But the key thing is how do we find it? Every human yes. longs for joy and happiness, but the key is how do we find it? Mm -hmm. What is happiness? Happiness is an emotion that is based on favorable circumstances that is usually comes from external factors. Amen. Whereas joy is a deeper quality that comes from deep within. All right, it, it, the joy is, is deep in, it's deep within our soul, it's, it's deep within our inner life. And, and when we have joy, then we can find ourselves uh, uh, feeling happy and joyful. It's something about joy that joy, you know, when a person can be happy and you may not be able to tell it, but when a person is joyful, I got the joy of the Lord, um, they will may have a smile, uh, they excited, and sometimes they have to shout, and they always have to give praise and honor to God. 
because something goes on in the inside of a person when they're experiencing joy. It's in the Bible, in Psalms chapter 16, verse 11, the scripture says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. It's in the Bible, and I want you to read that scripture again, because here it states very clearly that um, joy comes from the presence of the Lord. So God is not lost, but until we find God and come into his presence, then we are lost without having this joy in our souls. I'll read it again. Yes. In Psalms chapter 16, verse 11, mm -hmm. you make known to me the path of life. That's what the psalm is saying. God, you make known to me. The scriptures are so important. They're so valuable. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. You know, we, we, we our soul longs for joy. Uh, we, we, we look for something that was to sustain us. And not like uh, happiness, where well, you may be happy one moment. And then again, um, uh, anybody can be happy, but everybody cannot be, be joyful. Uh, so, you know, it, it, our soul is, is going to long for, for this, this um, inner fulfillment until we come into the presence of God. And once we feel this joy, uh, we will embrace it and uh, we will want to experience it forevermore. Amen. Uh, this powerful psalm paints a very clear picture of the joy Amen. and fulfillment that comes to those who know the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, doctor. We, we come to know the Lord when we look for him and we seek him and we make that vital connection, then we, we really come to know the Lord. And then when that happens, then we can walk away from sin and walk away from a, a lot of things that, that keep us in bondage and hold us back. We can certainly walk away with it because we have found something that brings uh, satisfaction. Amen. Pastor, joy can only come through a knowledge of God. It can only come through a knowledge of God. We have to know God. That's why I say, let us keep on seeking and searching and doing whatever we can, stand in the word and Bible study, uh, seeking the truth until we find the, our soul need. In John chapter 14, Amen. verse six, from the Living Bible, Jesus told him, I am the way, yes, and the truth and the life. No one can mm -hmm. get to the Father except by means Praise God. of me. There it is in a nutshell that we are going to have to have the truth in order to come into the presence of the Lord. And that's what we should seek for. And once we get there, uh, there's meaningful and there's purpose and fulfillment forevermore. In order to have joy, you have to be saved. You have to be saved. There's no way around it. You can uh, you can ask almost anybody. Uh, people may not know a lot about the Word of God, but they know they have had moments of happiness, and uh, it was fleeting moments that they will have uh, happiness for a while for certain seasons. But and they sometimes they have a mass a lot. You know, a lot of material things. Uh, uh, they have found. Uh, things that they were looking for in the world, but they were still not happy. And they will tell you right straight forward, what is the difference? They said you have to be saved. The reason they say that, because with all the things of this world, they have not found joy, sustaining joy. So what does it mean to be saved? We're gonna show you from the Bible Follow along. Acts mm. chapter 2, verse 36 through 38 from the Living Bible. The Word of God says, therefore. Amen. Now, this was the very first message ever preached after Christ's resurrection. So all of the gospel messages is centered around 
what you're about to read right now, Doctor. Therefore, I clearly state to everyone in Israel mm -hmm. that God has made this Jesus you crucified to be the Lord, the Messiah. So God has made him Lord, ruler over all of the universe. So he is waiting to do something for humanity. So we have to let him do it. The text goes on to say, these words of Peter moved deeply. You know, the true preaching, uh, uh, the truth about God's word uh, will move you if you listen. It moved them deeply, Pastor. Yes. And they said to him and to the other apostles, mm -hmm. brothers, what should we do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then Peter replied, yes. each one of you must turn from sin, mm -hmm. return to God, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Now, now doctor, the gospel hasn't changed. The message is still the same. And God is still making that same appeal to humanity. You, you have to repent and accept my son as ruler and owner of your life. And then I'm going to do something for you. Then you also shall receive this gift, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. Okay, we don't have to tell you. You know that joy is an uh, element. Uh, we'll talk about even a little later on that it is an element of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Spirit, uh, is of God. You have to, re we have to repent in, in order to experience this. Amen. This is written that your joy can be filled. It's written. John chapter. It's written that your joy can be filled. So uh, without the written truth of the word, then we can never experience this joy uh, in its fullness. Uh, we can't experience it at all because it is divine. It is a fruit of God, Holy Spirit. Look at what the Bible says in John chapter 15, verse it's 11. In the Bible from the Living Bible, mm -hmm. I have told you this mm -hmm. so that you will be filled with my joy. God got so much love. He wants every person, every human being to be filled with his joy. He came that we could have life and have it in his fullness, more abundant. God wants to fill us with joy. He wants us to be joyful children. He wants to be more than happy. He wants to have joy. The text goes on to say, yes, your cup of joy mm -hmm. will overflow. Overflow. Those who seek happiness mm -hmm. through external material things of this world mm -hmm. will never discover the pleasures of the joy-filled life. Mm -hmm. The purpose of this message is to help you discover and experience the benefits of joy that can only come from a deep love relationship with God the Father. We urge you because we know everybody needs it. Uh, it makes all the difference. We know that when we get this joy, that it makes us like God. You know, we're satisfied. We, we have satisfaction and we, we, bring, we bring more to the world. We have a shining light. We have fulfillment and we urge you and, because we want you to have it. God wants you to have it. He loves us like this, but it's something you have to keep on seeking until you find it. Because uh, from the cradle to the grave, we are always looking for something to fulfill us. Always, but we want to be able to find the true thing. And then that way we can live, we can love, we'll, we can have a great attitude, we can have great satisfaction, and we can give praise and worship to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. What is joy? Mm -hmm. It is defined in the Word of God as an attribute of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Joy is one of the nine characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Let me see this stuff. You know, it seemed uh, strange that through trials and tribulations that a person can have joy. 
It, it just don't sound uh, sensible to people. And I, I think that's why people don't really pursue this joy of the Lord and look for it. But I've seen it, you know, I've seen it in my life. I'm sure you've seen it. You know, sometimes we don't take notice of it, but so the most happiest and joy-filled people are people who are saved. Uh, they just love God and they love the truth. And uh, and that's where their, their focus is at and they love people. So uh, the joy of the Lord, you know, it, it is the most important thing that we can have. Then we, then we have our fulfillment and I, then we get satisfaction in life. Pastor, this kind of joy, it rises above circumstances it and it focuses on the very character of God. That's what we've really been looking for without being you know, aware of what our greatest need is. But, but it is our need to experience this fullness of life. It is a need. Pastor, sadly, everyone has not learned how to have joy in every circumstance. No, because people, people will tell you that I'm happy, but happiness is not good enough. And a lot of times you don't, you don't understand uh, the difference between joy and happiness. You won't know that until you run into some great trials and great tribulations. And we want to be able to go ahead and, and get this joy now, get it right now. So when the storm rises and the wind start to blow in life, and we're going through a lot that we want to already uh, have this joy exactly. down inside our souls. And you've seen it. You might have not paid attention, but there are some people that nothing, no sickness, not anything was able to take that joy. People who have gone through all kind of illness and suffer uh, uh, to the end, because this is a suffering way. Uh, uh, people don't suffer just because they may have done something wrong in life. But people suffer. Uh, they go through many things. But some have learned how to cultivate the kind of joy, that divine joy, which sustains them through everything. Uh, and, and when we see that, uh, it encourages us to say, you know, that, that that's what I want. You Amen. Know? I, I, I want to develop uh, this kind of uh, 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 fruit in my life, that I want this, you know, in my soul deep down in my soul, that I want something to take me all the way. Amen. Pastor, it's in the Bible, James chapter 1, verse mm -hmm. 2 through 3, from the English Standard Version, the Bible says, count it all joy, brothers, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. You know, doctor, without knowing the Lord and, and being led of the Holy Spirit, we would think, he said, how can you uh, count it a joy uh, 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 whenever you are going through all kinds of trials and tribulations. But some people can do it because that's how much they invested in the word and invested in their spiritual life. And then again, people say, well, I'm happy, I'm happy, but you're not going to know you're happy until you have to go through what some of what James is talking about right now. He goes on to say, for you know that the testing of your faith mm -hmm. produces steadfastness. And you know, for the Christian, sometimes going through trials and tribulation is what brings us out. It is the thing that builds our life. Uh, uh, trials and tribulation makes a Christian better. You, you know, uh, 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 through uh, tribulation and through suffering, it helps them to increase their faith. It helps them to grow. Amen. They become a better person. So that's what James is talking about here. So he said, in, in many situations, kind of a joy when you're really going through a tough, trouble of times. You know, God may be trying to teach you something. That's what he said. Amen. It? Unlike happiness. Mm -hmm. Joy is a choice. It is a choice. You got to choose it. And we must learn to choose mm. to have joy in the midst of external circumstances, no matter what is going on. You got to learn, uh, uh, this is a process, though. Uh, uh, this is something that has to be cultivated. This is something that we have to, to work for. What I mean by that, by studying, by taking the word of God in, by applying it by being in the truth, by li by living in the truth, and by taking the truth in uh, is, is something that you're going to have to really uh, uh, go after. Sometimes with everything within us, we, we have to go for it. Let's look at what the psalmist said in Psalms 30, verse 5 from Amen. the King James Version. The Bible says, weeping 
may endure for a night, mm -hmm. but joy cometh in the morning. All righty. So the person that is in the pursuit of joy and they, they're trying to grow in God and get to know them. That's why they don't have to give up and throw their hands up in the midst of of, of joy and midst of suffering. And that's good for, for young people out there. They realize that, that you're going to have to go through some tests and some trials out there. Uh, that This is good news for the people who are struggling, where you may think that God has forgotten about you. You may think that you are not going to be able to reach your goals mm -hmm. and purpose in, in life. But if you just trust God and look for it, then joy is going to come. And the reason it's going to come is because that pursuer is going to learn more about God. Amen. They may have to struggle. They may have to climb over high mountains. They may have to uh, go down through the valley. They may have to cry in the midnight hour, but they are looking for God. And then when they come into his presence, Praise then God. that transformation takes place and they are good forever. Praise God. Let us not be discouraged mm -hmm. by the challenges of this world. Absolutely. Let us focus on the things that have eternal value. Now, it's not going to be easy, doctor, to keep on persevering uh, in the midst of uh, 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 these tough times and these, these rough times. It's not going to be easy, but we must hold on Amen. and learn how to endure and refuse to give up and not, and not quit until we find the Lord in our soul. Praise God. Look at what Jesus said in Luke chapter 12 verse 15 he says for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possession that's that's the reason that we should really seek hard seek to know the lord because if we don't then we'll be spending so much time and most of our time to trying to find satisfaction in something external and um, we may find, we're going to find more moments of happiness and moments of, moments of joy. Everybody can find out something to be happy about for a season. But if we are going to get this everlasting joy that's going to endure through everything, then we are going to have to really seek God for that. You may ask the question, if joy is not based on possessions, then how can we acquire it? How can we acquire it? Well, I'm pretty sure that there are some answers in the Bible. There is an answer. There is an the answer. Absolutely. That's what we want to know. God have mercy. I want joy. You know, I've, I've had moments of happiness. But Lord, you're, talk, you're talking about this joy. I want it. But then, but you got to know how to get it. Yeah, you know, because you can say to yourself, you know, God knows I tried. But every once in a while, something come along and kind of knock me back a little bit. Uh, or something come along and, and, and cause me to forget. Uh, 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 who is the one that I serve? Amen. Amen. The answer is that we are going to have to seek a higher power. You're going to have to go higher. Amen. You're going to have to, one day you have to wake up and say, uh oh, I haven't found it out there. I've been looking, and God knows that, I, that I've, I've been looking. Because you know what? When I look around, you know, I, I, I have a lot. You know, I have a TV in every room. I have nice furniture and sometimes a, an, an automobile and I have a few dollars in the bank and everything. But look, that I, I'm still not fulfilling. And some of y'all can say right today that, boy, well, I was waiting and I finally got over to some money. But you know something? There is still an emptiness on the inside, you know. But then for all of you that have sought the Lord and, and given yourself to him, and then he have given you given you some money and some things and joy on top of that. Amen. Praise God. So how to acquire this joy? Mm -hmm. Pastor, can you explain and interpret Philippians? Mm -hmm. Follow along. Chapter 4, verse 4 through 11 from the Living Bible. Well, I'll tell you what. Let, let's look at this book. Because here is this come from this man who, who experienced all kind of trials and tribulation. And he can give us these inspired words that you're about to read for us. Verse four, the Bible says, always be full of joy in the Lord. Yes. I say it again. We're interested in that. That should strike us when the, the, the apostle telling us that always to be joyful in the Lord. That gets our attention. It gets my attention. Amen. He goes on to say, let everyone see that you are unselfish mm -hmm. and considerate 
in all you do, Not, uh, remember. How we how we going to acquire this this joy? We have to stop being selfish. We have to check ourselves up and say, look, you know, how much is this about me? How much do I consider uh, other people? Uh, 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 how, how, how far do I extend, you know, what God, uh, you know, uh, blessed me with? How am I using my life to be a blessing to others? Amen. Then you start, you start to eradicate some things, and this is drawing you closer to the joy of the Lord. But we have to unpack some things. He goes on to say, don't worry about anything. Mm -hmm. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. What he's saying, he said prayer, the, the right kinds of prayer, the kind of prayer that honors God, the kind of prayer that, that put God first, the kind of pr prayer that gets us beyond our own will and ask the Lord, what is your will? And we want to pray, 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 read, and study, meditate. Amen. And now we are coming closer. We are learning how to acquire this fullness of joy. But God is not ready to give it to us yet. We still got to unpack a few more things. Verse 7 if you do this, if you do this, you will experience God's peace. He just told you, look, here it is right there. Because you want to know, like we all want to know, how can I get this joy? Well, he said, this is what you have to do. Just tell us what you have to do. Are you willing? He goes on to say, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. We, we, can't even, we can't even imagine the value of unpacking some of these things that he just told us about in the earlier verses and 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 seeking the, the joy and the presence of the Lord. It, it, it haven't even entered into the minds or the hearts of man what it, what it is to experience uh, the joy of God at the soul level. Amen. He goes on to say, his peace will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet and at rest. Hold it right there, Doc. I want you to read that again because I know many people out there that sometimes you find yourself going a good period of time or, or being pretty calm about things, but all of a sudden that something come along and, and, and it is something hits you on the blind side and before, before you know it, that you're not acting according to the word. You're not acting holy. You, you know, you're not you're exactly. not walking by sight rather than, than feelings. So uh, uh, in this passage, um, God is reminding us through this writing uh, exactly what's going on here. Read that part again. His peace will keep your thoughts mm -hmm. and your hearts. We need our thoughts to be sanctified. And we have to certainly keep on uh, working for this and seeking after this because this is all so beneficial for us more than we can ever imagine. Amen. And we can have peace, righteous. What it really means, doctor, is holy thoughts. Praise God. Sanctified thoughts. Amen. Righteous thoughts. This is the kind of thoughts where we seek after and we hunger for righteousness. We want to be right. Amen, Pastor. He goes on to say in verse 8, and now, brothers, as I close this letter, mm -hmm. let me say this mm -hmm. one more thing. Okay, one more thing he wants to say. Fix your thoughts. <laughs> Fix your, I told you, it's got a lot to be, these thoughts must be sanctified because we get all kinds of, of thoughts bombarding our mind uh, all day long, and they are not holy thoughts. They're not Amen. sanctified thoughts. But then God want to give us these holy thoughts, these pure thoughts, these righteous thoughts these thoughts of peace and joy. And that's what we want. And we can tell when God is dealing with us and dwelling with us, we can tell by how much our thoughts mm. are, uh, are under the control Amen. of the Holy Spirit. Praise Amen. God. That's, that's God. so important, doctor. Amen. That's to so to help, help God to purify that our thinking, Amen. and we're not thinking to be right. And that's what the Bible is for. And that's what conversion is about. And that's what we go to church for. That's what we listen to the message Amen. for. We want to see it happen and taking place. Praise God. As pastor has expounded, fix your thoughts mm, fix on them. what is true and good. Now, the whole thing. That means you got to do something. Some people are sitting back waiting for God. But we have to start through... 
through paying attention and listening to fix our thoughts Amen. on higher things, Praise God. on things above, Amen. on something beyond what we can see, taste, touch, or feel. He goes on to say, think about all you can praise God for mm-hmm. and be glad about it. Now, you know what it, when, when, God, when we start walking in the, in, the, in, the, in the fullness of God and walking in his joy, you know, we spend a lot of time thinking about, look where he brought me from. Amen. And sometimes there's so much a joy in that. But you, you don't think about that when you're just happy because mm-hmm. your happiness is something maybe you did for yourself. Praise you God. didn't really do it for yourself. God gave you the strength to do it. But sometimes we use his power just for to try to satisfy our own needs. But this joy calls us to look back and say, look where he brought me from, you know. And most of all, that God took me out of a miserable world of sin and he put love in my heart Praise and God. he helps me to learn how to hold my peace. Amen. I don't have to have to have the last word anymore. And I can tell that God is dealing with me you'll say, because now that I find myself for my conversation being holy, the right kind of words, you know, I don't speak the same words I used to speak. And now that, that I just get this joy sometime, I get this joy, that this joy just floods in, you start to feel that, and then then, then you, you, you want to, it makes you want to shout. Amen. It makes you want to shout. Huh? Thanks, you believe that? I believe it, it makes you want. It makes you smile. Amen. And it makes you want a shout. shout. And sometimes the world don't know what you smiling about, and they don't know what you are wearing your Amen. hands about. Praise huh? God. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's what happens when that joy come in. You see, because you know God has done something. Praise you. God. But but you know the things that make you happy that that that, that you. Figure you bought on yourself, you got on your own, you know, hey, look, then 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 you're not you're not gonna experience joy, you know, you know. But after a while I gotta look at this. All that stuff after at some point it doesn't mean anything it anymore. Doesn't. It doesn't mean anything anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't mean so much. Yeah. And then you know, sometimes if you sometimes people might, you know, you come into a to a little bit more material thing, but you're still gonna be the same person. Praise but God. joy does not leave us, Dr. Lefebvre, it doesn't the leave same us. person. It transforms us fast. But happiness can leave us it can. the same way or uh, even worse. It can. Pastor. Happiness can do that. Happiness can do that. Uh, a person can be very happy by doing evil. They can. By cheating somebody. They can. By taking advantage of somebody. A person can be happy about that, you know? Mm. Huh? They can't. You see, but joy is altogether a different thing. Praise God. The text goes on to say, how grateful I am mm-hmm. and how I praise the Lord. That's why you praise the Lord. You cause you grateful. You got joy, you know, in your heart and your soul, and you just can't help yourself. You know, you got a smile on your face. Amen. You got joy in your no matter how you feel. Now, this is not based on feelings. Yeah, but it's based on what's in your soul. Praise God. Amen. I know you have always been anxious to send what you could, mm-hmm. but for a while you didn't have the chance. Mm-hmm. Verse 11, not that I was ever in need, mm-hmm. for I have learned how to get along happily, whether I have much or little. You know what it is? This <laughs> joy causes us to have contentment in every kind of situation. Amen. And I've seen people so sick. I've seen people going through so much. And at the same time, they had contentment. That was because the joy that was deposited in their soul along that Christian journey. Amen. And that's something that we also strive for because sometimes, you know, you look at so other people, they don't have anything, Holly, but they still have joy. And sometimes they thank for just a little piece of bread, just for a little glass of water. You know, they, they, they have joy. And sometimes we can have so much more and we still are empty and not fulfilled. Amen. But this joy that the Lord comes from, uh, coming into the presence of the Lord, uh, it blesses our soul forevermore. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. In John Gospel, chapter 16, verse 24 from the Living Bible, the Word of God says these words. You haven't tried this before, mm-hmm. but begin now. Start now. Ask. You know what is ask, ask, ask. That's another key thing. The key thing to, another thing to acquire, we got to ask God for it. 
But sometimes we're so busy trying to find happiness on our own, on things out there, and sometimes it's, I don't know if it's the devil getting us to do it, or if it's following the Joneses get us to do it, or what. But I do know that we can find ourselves just spending so much time uh, trying to make our own self happy. Amen, Pastor. Uh -huh. But then we need to seek the Lord. Ask him. Ask him. We need to ask him continuously. God, give me the joy of my soul. Give it to me. And then, you know, you say, well, I'm happy. You know, you know, you know, I have peace. But if you don't really uh, uh, have this thing in your soul where we are bringing glory to God and everything, then then uh, it, it, it's, it's just a figment of our imagination whether we really have it. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor. There you have it. Ask mm -hmm. using my name and you will receive mm -hmm. and your cup of joy will overflow. So in the name of Jesus. Got to say, in, in the, the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. God, give me joy. In give the joy. name of Jesus. Lord, give me joy mm -hmm. inside of my soul. In the name of Jesus. God, give me jo joy in my thought life. Amen. In the name of, in Jesus, the name of Jesus, God, do it. I'm asking do you it, for it, Lord, because it's something it. that I cannot Amen. gain by my own efforts. Amen. In James, in our closing, chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 2 through 3, from the Living Bible, he said, Dear brothers, mm -hmm. Is your life full of difficulties and mm -hmm. temptations? Is it? Then be happy. Mm -hmm. For when the way is rough, mm -hmm. your patience has a chance to grow. Yeah, a lot of time through these trials and tribulation, God is teaching us patience, teaching us to slow down, teaching us how to trust in him. But we got to pay attention. You got to say, Lord, what are you telling me? What are you saying to me? Amen. Pastor, thank you so much again for another powerful message on the difference between joy and and happiness. Can you close out by just giving us some encouraging words? Well, yes. Thank you so much, Doctor, and thank you for this time that we spend together expanding on the Word of God. Uh, but and greetings to to our church family, to our elders and, and deacons, our family and friends, and to everyone that that listening uh, uh, to these messages. Um, I, I just urge you again to seek and ask God to give you that joy. Give us that joy Amen. that fills our souls and satisfies our souls because there's something that lasts for eternity. And that's what we is eternal. And that's what we want to really Amen. invest in. And then again, I want to thank you all that God is good to us and for being faithful to the church and still loving each other and realize that we are still in church. We're not in the building, Amen. but we are still in church every Sunday and every Wednesday night. So I want you all to be blessed out there and keep on thanking the Lord. And if you don't have this joy, uh, the full this fullness of joy, ask God for Praise it. God. And just keep on asking him. He'll show you exactly what to do. Amen. God Thank bless you, man of God. God bless you, Pastor. May God bless you and make his face to shine upon you. God bless you. Thank you.